your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the famous plays and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you, transcribed, Monday through Friday, by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Oh, darling, look at Bluff and Shakespeare. Aren't they sweet? Do you suppose they've been sleeping in each other's arms all night? Mm. Mm. It's nice to have breakfast, too. Oh, so it is. And it's nice to kiss your husband good morning, too. Good morning, David. And there's something else that's nice. What? Put on your slippers and put on your bathrobe so you don't catch cold. Oh, that. That's dull compared to other nice things in the world. Be dull, then, and put them on. David, since when are you taking care of me? I thought it was up to me to take care of you. No, that's where you're wrong. It's vice versa. Now, go on. Put on your slippers. And insult this lovely white carpet? much warmer than any old slippers. Listen, you future mother. Very future, worse luck. You do as I say, or I'll spank the daylights out of you. Very future papa, too. Oh, all right, I'll put them on. I know you're not worrying about me. I'm not, eh? You're worrying about your heir apparent. Only he isn't uh, even a parent yet. No, you're the parent. Oh. oh, now put on those slippers and that bathrobe. Oh, all right. I'll get the paper at the front door. And I'll get the milk at the back. And I'll get the mail at the front door. And I'll get the cream at the back. What about the eggs? What about them? Well, where do you get those? The store in the corner. How inconvenient. Well, the milkman would deliver them, but they're cheaper at the store. You're such a little housekeeper. Eggs are 80-something cents a dozen. It's awfully high, isn't it? Gee, if I were a hen, I'd make a million dollars. All a hen has if to do If you don't is... put on your slippers, I'll wring your neck. All right, all right, all right. I'm putting them on. Do you want yours? No, I'm getting dressed. David, isn't this the most wonderful way to live? Married? It has its advantages. I don't mean that. I mean everything else. Oh, there's something else. I mean living in this apartment. The milk at the back door, the paper at the front door, the extra room for the baby. And look now, the sun's shining in here. Mm-hmm. Shakespeare's purring in his sleep. And Bluff is thumping his tail again. Oh, David, this is perfect. We're very lucky, darling. We have a good long lease, and I guess the milkman will keep coming. And the sun will keep rising in our bedroom and setting in the living room. And Bertha and Fritz are downstairs and Mama just around the corner. <laughs> and Bluff likes it here. <laughs> darling, you don't have to itemize our luxuries like a bookkeeper. I'm fully aware of them. I guess I'm really talking to myself. It's nice every now and then to look at myself in the mirror and say, Claudia Brown Norton, you've got everything in the world to be happy about. You just hang on to them for dear life. David, let's not ever move from here. The milk and the mail will follow us, but I know what you mean. Only there's one more thing I'd like you to say to yourself. What, darling? Claudia Brown Norton... Would you please put on your bathrobe and get breakfast for your very happy but hungry husband? <laughs> yes, Mr. Carrington. Yes, it's Mr. Norton. Oh? Well, I'll have to have another set of blueprints made for that freight terminal. Oh, yeah, oh in a few days... Hello, David. Yes. Oh, Carrington on the phone. Oh. Yes. Well, of course, one of the most important factors involved is the area of the site. Do you have an air plan of that acreage? No, no, that, that wouldn't help. Yes, I suppose the best thing for me would be to come to Chicago. Well, I'll manage, but uh, not for several weeks yet. All right. All right. Those blueprints will be in the mail this afternoon. Yes, Mr. Kang. Yes. Well, goodbye. Well, 
He's the kind of man who wants everything done yesterday. I think you handle him beautifully. He's still very excited about that freight terminal, isn't he? Mm, looks like it. His lawyers are drawing up the contracts with us. They'll be ready by the end of the week. Wonderful. Wonderful. Oh, it's a beautiful day. And I've got something to tell you. Oh, something far more exciting than all the freight terminals in the world. Speak up, partner. What is it? Well, it's just this. I drove to Eastbrook, Connecticut yesterday, had lunch with Frost. They have a beautiful place, uh, but that's not the story. After lunch, we went for a drive. Well, that sounds fairly harmless. I thought it would be, too, so I sat back in the car and didn't pay very much attention to what was going on. Uh, we'd had devil crab for lunch, and, well, you know, it plays the devil with me. <laughs> so we were rolling along perfectly lovely farm country there in back of Eastbrook. Trees. Yes, oh. uh, Roger, I, uh, I know all about Eastbrook. Oh, you do? I know all about trees, too. Just to tell me what happened. Well, I'm coming to that. I want to give you a picture of the whole thing, just as it happened. As my impatient wife would say, I'm busting to know. You know, you're getting more and more like Claudia every day. Questions, <laughs> questions, questions. Well, as I was saying, we were driving along a back road, when all of a sudden, there, around the bend, in a hollow, half shaded by some ancient maples, I saw one of the most charming houses that I have ever come across. Pure salt box built in 1760. The real thing. Down to the last doorknob. David, that house has such a personality, such serenity, such perfection of line. Oh, I fell completely in love with it. Say, I, I haven't heard you rave about anything like that in a long time, Roger. I haven't seen anything like this house in a long time. It's so beautiful set, right in the bend of the road. And it's for sale. There was a large sign posted in front, for sale. Inquire, Jerry Tucker, Maiden Lane, Eastbrook. I gather you, uh, you went in. It, it's an old farmhouse. All the original beams, flooring, and the brass. The condition of the house is repairable. Mm -hmm. Or a beautiful job could be done of renovating it. Keeping all the original features and details, of course. And I think you could buy it for a song. Roger, you you aren't uh, planning on... Aren't what? You aren't going to buy it, are you? Me? Buy it? Oh. Of course not. Oh. I've already got a place in Connecticut that I'm trying to sell. The way things are, I mean, with my wife, I really don't have any use for a home anymore. A good hotel is so much more convenient. Then what's all this excitement? Besides, of course, uh, your appreciation as an architect. But don't you see, David? Haven't you caught on? To what? It's the perfect house for you. For me? Why, of course, for you and Claudia. There's a brook on the place. Claudia would love a brook. She's so delightfully refreshing. She's so refreshing, she doesn't need a brook. When I saw the house standing there, every inch authentic, with a long history of fireplaces and families around them, with the walnut tree and the crest of the hill, I knew it was the house for you. No, oh, but uh, we're getting along beautifully without a walnut tree, and, and we've got a fireplace. You're getting a family, too. Don't forget that. Well, I'm not forgetting. We've got an extra room for the family. But, David, this is the solution to all your problems. Problems? We haven't any problems. Oh, everyone has problems. You're no different. If you haven't them now, you'll get them, and this is the answer to them. Well, Roger, I... I've never heard you talking like this before. Oh, well, I guess I got myself excited about this, and I... <laughs> yes, I, yes, I'd say you have. But, David, promise me one thing. What? Promise me that you won't make up your mind against it until you've seen it. It's really something. Believe me, it is. Oh, David, it's, it's the perfect place for you and Claudia. You can make that house into a veritable little paradise. It has a barn, too. Mm. Are barns a part of paradise? Barns mean your own cattle. Your own cattle means your own cows. And your own cows mean your own milk. Imagine growing your own milk right in your own barn. <laughs> but we've got a perfectly healthy milkman. And our own milk grows right at our back door. Oh, well, which is a good deal more convenient than a barn. David, can't you be a little more imaginative? Don't you appreciate the difference between a cow and a milkman? Yes, yes, I... I see it very well. I've always sort of thought of myself as a farmer. Mm -hmm. 
But I'm not ready to move uh, yet. Uh. Out to the country, anyway. Someday, perhaps, not now. Claudia would be alone all day, and... Oh, Miss Norton had a farm. Here's the bad bag here, the belly there. Here's chick, there, chick. And uh -uh. Eastbrook is commuting distance to New York, you know. Uh-huh. Not now, though. I'm glad to hear you don't want me to quit work. Just to live out in the wilds of Connecticut someplace, that's a relief. You don't think I'm serious, do you? Well, I, I've i lost my breath, that's all. You'll catch it. And when you do, you'll realize that I'm perfectly right. David, you can bring up your children in the country with trees and grass, good air, and plenty of space to play in. You'll own some land. You'll have something that you can see and walk on and watch and develop. You'll have a home that's yours. Yours and Claudia's for as long as you want it. And no one can take it away from you. Except the banks or the mortgage owner or the tax collector. Not your land. You won't let it go. But, Roger, we've got a beautiful apartment. We're all set. Just this morning we were talking Just about Just this it. morning you didn't know about this house. That's the truth. And yesterday morning you didn't know about it. I wish I had known about it. And knew what I know now, 30 years ago. Oh? David, you're young and strong and you're in love. You're just starting out. Get yourself some roots. Don't spend your life borrowing your home from begrudging landlords. Build it yourself. Stake out a piece of this country that can become Norton land and live on it. Then perhaps your life won't scatter to the four winds like... like so many others. The deepest rooted trees grow the tallest and the strongest. If I were you, and I could stand here and talk to myself the way I'm talking to you, I'd buy myself a farm. I happen to have seen the one I like. But there are others. Buy one. Have it. Live well and grow with it. You'll have something when you're through. Well, I... There's a lot in what you... Thanks, Roger. Thanks? Thanks for what? For letting a friend do a little wishful thinking for letting him stand in your shoes and live your life. But just one thing I do want, David. Think it over before you say no. I'm going up to Redbury tomorrow, Roger. Now I'll not only think it over, I'll... I'll have a look at the house before I say no. Oh, McNaughton has a farm, and on that farm he has a subway, milk at the door, morning papers, taxi cabs, skyscrapers, attic machines. Oh. These broadcasts of Claudia are adapted by Manya and Roger Starr, and the entire production is supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. When you invite people over... They like to have you take it easy. That's one of the many reasons they like to have you serve Coca-Cola. They know all you have to do is to go to the refrigerator and bring out those frosty, inviting bottles. And whether you serve it in glasses or right from the bottle, you couldn't offer more refreshment nor a friendlier welcome, though you paid many times the five cents that Coke costs. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For ice-cold Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes.